Welcome. Welcome to our Monday Thursday service. Uh, we are delighted that you've decided to join us. Though we are not together physically, we've encouraged you to join us online. And tonight is a special night because we've come together to remember the last meal that Jesus shared with his disciples. And as we remember, we are inviting you to share in the meal with us. And so if you have a piece of bread, or, and some wine or grape juice, whatever would work for you. I invite you to, to bring it, and uh, when I break the bread during uh, the communion liturgy that we will do, I invite you to break the bread at the same time. And uh, when we eat, we eat together, and when we drink, we will drink together. So I hope this is a meaningful service for you tonight. Let us join together in our call to worship. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. In, In worship, worship on this, on this evening, evening, we testify to God's, God's love, shown perfectly in Christ, and we recommit ourselves to love one another as a community of faith. Let us pray. Together, holy, holy God, God we, we come, come to worship, worship in, in the, the gathering, gathering shadows of Jesus' suffering and death. We come with his friends, the men and women who have followed him in every place and generation, to live once again this story of service and betrayal, of weakness and courage. We come to witness your love in action. Be with us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. A reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. Hear the word of the Lord. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we gather together tonight, all in different places around this community. And yet, though we are scattered, we are together. And you see the desires of all our hearts. We desire to hear a word from you. So we pray that you would meet us wherever we find ourselves, 
spiritually, emotionally, and physically, that you would meet us in the dark, d- darkest places within us, the deepest places that need you the most. And we pray that you would take away anything that hinders us from hearing your voice tonight, hearing the message that you have prepared for us. Open our minds and hearts to all that you have in store. In your name we pray, amen. Tonight, as we come together for this Monday Thursday service, we come together to remember three key elements in, in Jesus' final week. Jesus washing the feet of his disciples, the institution of the Lord's Supper, and his new commandment to love one another. In preparation for this night, I have been reflecting on the importance of this meal for us. It has led me to think about how important all meals are for us when we come together as families. For it is at our meals that we share our lives. We share the ordinary day-to-day happenings. We share our hopes and dreams. We celebrate big events in our lives. We even share our disappointments and our pain. The meals we share with our family and friends are essential for our lives as they become a place to breathe and be our authentic selves in the presence of those we love. And now here we are. Sequestered in, our, sequestered in our homes, unable to come together because of the pandemic. Some are filled with anxiety. Some are feeling lonely. Some are grieving the loss of not being able to be with their family and friends. Of all times, this would be the time that we would eagerly come together just to be in the presence of one another, to glean encouragement and strength that, that help combat our uncertainty and fear. But we cannot come together. And so tonight, as we do gather together in a very different way, there is a sense of heaviness and grief, somewhat like the heaviness and grief that Jesus and the disciples may have been experiencing the night they gathered to share what would be their last meal. As Jesus and his disciples share a meal with one another, we find this meal to be ordinary in so many ways as they have shared countless meals before, and Jesus' teaching and serving was nothing new. And yet this meal is anything but ordinary. As this meal is laced with the knowledge that there is a betrayer in their midst, as well as Jesus is repeatedly referring to his upcoming death. The mood is heavy and the disciples are not quite understanding what is happening. They are confused and trying to make sense of it all. We have the luxury of hindsight as we hear the words of institution, the words that Jesus spoke over the bread and wine Therefore, let us journey together through words that to many are familiar and inquire to what Jesus may be saying in the circumstances we find ourselves this night. On the night that he was betrayed, yes, Jesus was betrayed by someone closest to him, Judas. I have been betrayed before, have you? Have you ever experienced someone close to you betraying you? Have you ever experienced the pain and the damage that betrayal causes? Can you still feel the wound that was inflicted? Or can you remember a time when you betrayed someone, someone close to you, a family member, friend, coworker, perhaps Jesus? Jesus took bread, bread, a main staple in most of our homes, a staple that many of us take for granted, a necessity for many but not all have, a staple that connects us with countless people around the world, a staple that we enjoy, that sustains us and nourishes us. Jesus takes bread and brings it to life. The bread becomes his life. And after giving thanks, we find gratitude Jesus' life was framed by gratitude. Even in the face of betrayal and soon to be suffering and death, Jesus gives thanks. Like Jesus, we are invited to frame our lives with gratitude in the face of illness, grief, loss, betrayal, pain, brokenness, and pandemic. For gratitude is more than a practice. It is a lens through which we look And not only does it color what we see, it can redefine the realities in which we find ourselves. 
as well as give us strength and courage in the midst of our trials. And after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. As often as you eat it, do this in remembrance of me. Jesus' body is broken. He is physically broken. He is imprisoned, tortured, and brutally killed and dies an agonizing death on a wooden cross. And he does so willingly, experiencing the worst of humanity, the lying, betraying, rejecting, judging, deserting, condemning, and killing, and the list goes on. He takes on our sin, the worst that we have ever done and will do, and willingly suffers and lays down his life for each and every one of us. And so, as we eat this bread tonight, we remember. We remember that out of his immense love for us, Jesus willingly gave up his life. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant sealed with my blood for the forgiveness of your sins and the sins of the world. Do this in remembrance of me. In laying down his life, Jesus offers us a new covenant, a new promise of forgiveness. Forgiveness that was paid for by the shedding of his blood. Forgiveness that can bring healing to the deepest parts within us, that covers our shame, that brings us life that sets us free. For it says in Romans 8.1, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And so, as we drink this wine tonight, we remember that through the shedding of his blood on the cross, we are offered the gift of forgiveness. We are offered grace. Grace that did not come cheap. Grace that was paid for with Jesus' very own life. And whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again. In this meal, we remember we are saved through Christ. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For in the partaking of this meal, we are proclaiming this truth, that The truth that through Jesus sacrificing his life, we are offered new life here and now, as well as in eternity. For death is no more. In Christ, death becomes a mere doorway into our next chapter of life, fully alive, where there will be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more suffering, only joy, healing, restoration, and reunion. And so tonight we come understanding that this isn't just a rote religious ceremony, but rather we are communing communing with the one who loves us and has given up everything for just to be with us. As we partake of this meal sequestered in our homes with physical distance between us, we can allow this meal to remind us that we are not really alone as Jesus is with us and through our screens, whether it be computer, TV, iPad, or phone, We are connected with one another in spirit and as we are one in Christ. For it says in Matthew 18, 20, For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. We have gathered tonight. Jesus is here. Let us join together and come to the table confessing our sins together. In the Lord's Supper, Christ is present by the power of the Holy Spirit and offers us his body broken for our sake and his blood shed for the forgiveness of our sins. As we prepare to receive this great gift, let us confess our sin and hear the promise of forgiveness. Merciful God, we We confess that that we we have sinned against you in thought, thought, word, word, and and deed by by what we have have done. done and And by by what we have have left undone. undone. We We have have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and and strength. strength. We We have have not not loved our neighbors as ourselves. ourselves. In In your mercy, mercy, forgive forgive what we have have been. been. Help Help us amend amend what we are are, and and direct what we shall be so that we may delight in your will 
and walk walk in in your ways ways, to to the the glory glory of your your holy holy name. name. Amen. Amen. Let us take a moment and make this prayer our own. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. May the God of mercy who forgives you all your sins strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Praise Praise be be to to God. God. Amen. Amen. Please join me in our communion liturgy and this will be the time that after we do the liturgy and I do the words of institution, I will invite you to break the bread as I break the bread here. And I invite you to eat and drink at due time, and we will do so together. Please join me in our communion liturgy. We are one bread, one body, one cup of blessing. Though we are many throughout the earth and this church community is scattered, we are one in Christ. In your many kitchens and living rooms, rest your hands lightly upon these elements which we set aside tonight to be a sacrament. Let us ask God's blessing upon them together. Gentle Gentle Redeemer, Redeemer, there is no lockdown on your blessing, blessing, no no quarantine quarantine on your grace. grace. Send Send your your spirit of life and and love, power and blessing blessing upon every every table table where your your child child shelters in place, place, that that this bread may be broken and gathered in love, love, and this cup poured out to give hope to all. Risen Christ, live in us, that we may live in you. Breathe in us, that we may breathe in you. you. And on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, And after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. As often as you eat it, do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed with my blood for the forgiveness of your sins and the sins of the world. As often as you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Let us keep the feast. Please join me in our prayer of thanksgiving. Let us pray in thanksgiving for this meal of grace, rejoicing that by the very method of our worship, we have embodied the truth that Christ's love is not limited by buildings made with human hands, nor contained in human ceremonies, but blows as free as the Spirit in all places. Spirit Spirit of Christ, Christ, you you have blessed our tables and our lives. lives. May May the eating of of this bread give give us courage courage to speak faith and and act love. Not, not only in church, church sanctuaries, but in your precious world. And may the drinking of this cup renew our hope, even in the midst of pandemic. Wrap your hopeful presence around all those bodies, spirits, and hearts need healing. And let us become your compassion and safe refuge. Amen. Let us in our many places receive the gift of God, the bread of heaven. We are are one one in Christ, Christ, in in the the bread bread we share. Let us eat.
Let us in our many places receive the gift of God, the cup of blessing. We are, we are one, one in Christ, Christ in, in the, the cup, cup we share. Let us drink. Please join me in the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, For thine is, is the, the kingdom, kingdom and, and the power and, and the glory forever. forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Go in peace then loving one another and loving the world that God so loved. Amen. Amen.